Well, you lot, I'm at a place, it's supposed to be a church, it probably is a church, in, in a minute it'll be in focus, but for now I'll just stay out of focus, and uh, we'll have a look at this church while I'm out of focus, we'll get there. Anyway, it's meant to be a church, and I, I drive past it all the time and I'm like, i going to have to go and have a look and see what that church is like. I think the building's quite old, but it ain't your normal church, that's for sure. Here it is, look. Let's have a look and see what it's all about, shall we? It's definitely one of the weirdo churches, I think. It's got like a nice thing on the top. I don't know what it says, but it even says anything. I don't think it does. It's got a cross on the front. I think that probably used to say something, it's come off. And then, uh, supported by whatever the hell that says. The car's been on here for ages now. Every time I drive past, I see that car. Anyway. Yeah, it looks like it's quite nice on the inside, it's got some stained glass. I think it's one of these modern churches, isn't it? Breathe on me, it says. It's got a car park, look. One of those nice big car parks. Little fence that goes around, random door. Graves, some stuff over there. A little bench. Little petrol thing for a kid. There's some kids' toys here, look. Little bird bath. Goes out here, look. Little path goes out. Like some animals or something comes out here, look. A few horses out in that field. So a little building on the side. But yeah, it's not your normal church, is it? It's not a proper, a proper model. It's like a kitchen and things in there. It's obviously where they cook up food for their... What do you call... Um, what do you call people who go to church? Christians, isn't that, I suppose? We call them guests, the guests of the church. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. To be honest, perhaps they guests, but they cook up food for their guests. But yeah, I thought we'd have a quick look at it. There's not really a lot to look at. There's a stained glass window on the other side. You can just see it through that window there. There's not really a lot to look at. It's pretty boring, to be honest. That's what I like about the new modern, the new modern, the old, old-fashioned churches really is that there's a lot more to look at whereas these type you know they're they're just they're boring aren't they i know this building looks quite old I, i'm going to take a guess probably built in 1970s or something like that it might be a lot older than that and i'm just like being a dickhead but it don't look old does it you know like the design of it it's just a it's just a big house really isn't it so, I don't know, but they're definitely not as exciting as the normal kind of church that you get. Your normal sort of old-fashioned church that you normally get in this country is a lot more exciting. You've got your towers, you've got your big stained glass windows, your big wooden doors, you know, all the fancy designs all around. And, um, yeah, this one is just a... But, I suppose, to be honest, for a church-goer, the look of the church. Some of them might just, they might choose their church because of how they look, I suppose. I mean, I would. If I was going to go to church, I'd be like, I'm going to the one that looks the best. The oldest, grandest church. I don't want to go to one of these new modern ones, but I don't go to church, so that's not neither here nor there. But, um, yeah. What's your opinions on that, you lot? 
I know there's a lot of, lot of new modern ones, like the proper new ones popping out, but they're just like, this is just a building, isn't it? There's no actual, you know, they don't put the effort in what they used to put in. I mean, back in the olden days, the 16th, um, 1600s and 1700s, when they were building the proper churches that we've been going around and looking at, I mean, you can tell that they really wanted to impress. They really, really wanted to make a building that was just the nuts, didn't they? All the design, the effort that went into it, you know, proper. But these modern ones, they just build a brick, a brick building, didn't they? Like a square block, you know. That that is the truth. I'm not putting them down. That's the truth. I mean, we got the evidence sitting right in front of us. We all know what the old-fashioned the churches that I've been looking at prior to this one look like. You got proper turrets, didn't you? With bell towers in. You've got all sorts of funny, fancy designs, little doors that go down into the ground, big grand wooden doors at the front. We all know what a church looks like, whether we're religious, Christian or not. We know what a church looks like. And um, that's them. But these these ones, this, this is more like the modern day ones that they build nowadays, <coughs> really. It's just a, a brick building might have a, even to be honest even the real modern ones don't even have a fancy thing on the front do they? they're just like a house and they really have stopped putting the effort into them but um it's just like all buildings are really to tell you the truth isn't it they've stopped putting the effort into a lot of buildings now you know they uh they got to be like wham bam thank you ma'am building up you know job done no uh effort and grand design going in it's just um Get it done, give me my money, and fuck off, see you later. That's what it's all about, isn't it, really? Now, but them days, it weren't like that. It was like, don't matter how long it takes, it don't matter how much it costs, we're having a fucking brilliant building. <laughs> or it must have been. I would love to be able to look back and, and like be like, um, go back in time and watch as they're building one of those churches in the 1600s, the older ones. Oh, man. It, no machines, no nothing. All done by hand, all the stones and everything, all putting it together. It must be an amazing thing to watch and how they did it back then, you know what I mean? No machines, nothing to cut the stone with. I how would they even cut the stone? I don't probably hammer and chisel. It, they must have had a hammer and chisel back then in the 1600s, 1700s, but it must be a fantastic thing to watch. I'd love it. I'd love to see that, how they done it. Because, think about it, them buildings are built by hand, you know, no fancy gizmos or nothing, and all the walls are straight, everything's nice, and they're still standing and solid as a bloody rock. The only, the only reason that some of them have been demolished is because of the war that happened and have been bombed. Other than that, they're all still standing like a rock, aren't they? It is absolutely fantastic, you got. But, yeah. Some of these, some of them are disappointing, like this one. But we'll find out. Maybe uh, might be able to find out how long it's been here. It's definitely um, a mo more modern one because look, we've got an advert over there. Oh, there's a there's a window in there. There's an advert over there. Look, if you can read it. There it goes. Focus. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. Slimming wall. See that we've got an advert. On the um, on the wall for Slimming World, so they're obviously a more modern place because they would wouldn't want to advertise Slimming World otherwise, would they? There we go, you lot. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Well, we've got a fun fair coming out. They come here every now and again. End up over there. You got all sorts of things there. You can go on merry-go-rounds a lot. Look, what's that all about? <laughs> Love it. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Yeah, so we got elephant, fun elephant thingy-majigs and all kinds of other things. There's loads of stuff over there. They're like a travelling circus kind of thing. Not a circus though, but it's like a travelling fun fair. Goes around and travels around and yeah, it always ends up on this uh, little area. Yeah, there's loads of things. It's gone now though. Well, it's finished I think. Because uh, it's been here for a couple of weeks now. Uh, looks like I've been busy though.
I don't know, you've been stuck in the old traffic now for a while because of the railway crossing and a um, couple of dickheads getting out, walking around, but other than that, we're still waiting. What's going on, you look? Here's one here, look in the mirror, look, there's one. Here now, walking around, can't see the that focus, because they've walked around in the mirror. Got some action going back this way, maybe that means the level crossing's gone up, yay! Let's talk about food for a minute, right? Food. I mean like takeaway food. What's the prices where you live? Because, you know, for years we used to get a takeaway about once a week, yeah, usually on a Friday. Be like takeaway, or Friday night, and then it went to Saturday night. Ta you know, Saturday night takeaway, Friday night takeaway, whatever. Um, you know, just for something interesting once a week, you know, sit down, relax, don't have to cook anything, anyway, blah, blah, blah. It used to be a reasonable price. You know, you could get like a doner kebab with chips and all the salad and a drink and everything for about four quid. But now, why oh, not anymore? What's happened? I just It's all of a sudden shut up. We don't do it no more because it's too expensive. So I've got a menu here. I'm not going to show you the name of it, but I want to have a look at the prices and you'll see what I mean. So this is just a slightly out of focus menu that we get for a dollar all the time. And uh, this one's got a proper barbecue grill. And uh, you know, you've got all the nice stuff on the front, lovely jubbly. But let's have a look at the prices, man. I mean, bloody hell, right? So we got, you can get, this isn't this, this isn't just this particular shop, it's just an example. They're all the same prices, by the way. So I'm not having to go at this particular place because for some reason they're all the same. So you can get um, a doner kebab, right? If we can get focus on it. Um, freshly sliced doner meat, seasoned and grilled on an upright spit. Right, so you can get a medium one for seven quid, a large one for eight pound fifty, or an extra large for eleven pounds. Fuck's sake, a chicken donner. There you go, look, chicken donner. Same sort of prices, bit more expensive. Um, coffee kebab. Look at that. Look at that price. Fuck's sake. What's it all about? The prices, man. The prices. Um. Combination kebabs, all 11 quid, apart from a veggie kebab, which is a fiver. Sorry about the focus, this camera's not really uh, designed for this sort of work. Um, meat and chips, Donna meat and chips, small, is seven pounds. Fuck's sake, man. You can go and get a McDonald's for less than that. Uh, burger and Donna meat, you can get a Donna roll, five pounds. Donna roll and a drink, seven pound fifty. Portion of Donna meat, literally just a portion of Donna meat, five quid. Then you get extras. Portion of rice, medium, two pounds. You know, chips, medium, two pounds fifty, a large, three pounds twenty. What the bloody hell is that all about? Like I say, it, it's, it's not just this particular um, place, you know, it, it, they're all the same sort of prices around here. <laughs> used to be about four pound used to be able to get I used to get this exact one right a donut kebab um, but I'd get it as a meal so you, I used to get chips and a drink and I'm not even joking right it used to be four pounds and I used to get a large one it used to be four pounds so that's more than doubled in about I don't know about four years and here's another one look right we'll get in focus in a minute Right, oh maybe we won't, it's not, it's not liking it, anyway. The drinks is one I don't get, well look, you can get this fucking, what the fuck. Anyway, look at the drinks, right? You can get, you can get a can of any of them things there, for a quid. Which is about right, you know, I remember, I remember when cans like that used to be 50p in a shop. Anyway, they're about a quid now in a shop, that's about right. But fucking hell, bottles, right? Pepsi. Diet Coke, Seven Up or Tango for a bottle. That's your ordinary 500 milliliter bottle. Yeah, you just a normal 500 ml bottle. Three pounds. Three pounds for a fucking bottle. You can get them in the shop for a, what are they? I think a bottle is about one pound twenty in the shop when you go and buy it. About one pound twenty. Three quid. Fucking dickheads. What's that all about? Six hot wings. Three pounds seventy. A side salad, two pounds. Extra pit of bed, oh, 50p. Oh, that's nice of them, 50p. 
yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. Uh, the prices of the food these days. I mean, you can get pizzas. Look, um, how much is a pizza from this place? Cheese and tomato. Uh, Four pounds sixty. Yeah, it's uh, a pizza deal. Bloody hell. I bet they're not prepared fresh either. I almost guarantee they're probably frozen. If they're not, they'll be. I would be surprised. Good to good on them if they're not frozen pizzas, but I would. I wouldn't like, like to guess. I reckon they probably would be. I can't imagine them um, making a pizza. To be honest, to be fair, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just couldn't imagine that they charge these prices for that. Fuck's sake. And I mean, obviously, I'm I'm aware, you know, that shops have to put their prices up. Um takeaways do because of the cost of the meat the cost of the ingredients has gone up probably you know but what I'm, I'm not trying to have a go at the actual takeaway places the actual shops I know some of them are probably dickheads they probably inflate the prices too much and they probably should need to people that must be paying them though because they're still in business and they've been in business for a long time this particular one's been in business since 1977 1977 1997 not 77 97 for fuck's sake um, you know, and there's loads of, there's actually, I can think off the top of my head, about six kebab places, you know, um, and a few kebab vans, but six, about six places, the same as this one, in my area where I live, and um, they're all the same prices, trust me, they might fluctuate a little bit, but they're all about the same, Donna kebab, a large one's about 11 quid, what's that all about, I know, I don't understand it, um, you know, just go to McDonald's for about five quid, five pounds sixty, get yourself a fucking Big Mac meal, you know, and you got the burger, the chips, and the drink. If we're talking takeaways, I know a lot of you lot are going, I don't eat takeaways, you ain't good. Fuck off, I don't give a fuck. I only have takeaway once a week, and that's that. But I'm not on about how many times you have a takeaway, I'm on about the prices. I don't see how people will actually pay those prices. Who would actually, it's not about the fact of being able to afford it. I mean, we could afford that, that's no problem. It's more of the principle of, is that food worth that amount of money? And the answer to that question is, it doesn't matter how well it's cooked and how well it's prepared and the quality of that meat, no. I wouldn't say that was worth that whatsoever. You're going to spend that much, fuck's sake, so that's just for one. So if me and the wife, the wife and I wanted to get a doner kebab each, yeah? We're talking about 22 quid. And then, obviously, got to think about the kids. We're talking nearly 30 odd quid for that. Fuck! You know, we could go to an actual restaurant, an actual proper restaurant, and have an actual proper meal, yeah? For around that, for around 30. We, when we go to a restaurant, from the wife and me, <laughs> And the kids, we normally spend, I'm talking a proper restaurant, yeah, like a Harvest or a Haywain, um, we normally spend about 30 to 40 quid, that's on everything, yeah, the drinks, the food, the lot, and we, and, and that, that is roughly the same, fuck, what's this, <laughs> crazy man, crazy, give me your opinions, you lot, anyway, I'll catch you later, all the best, and I'll see you on the next one, dudes.